Hi, this is the AQA practice paper set three for GCSE mathematics. This is the higher tier and it's paper three, which is a calculator paper. I'm going to go over each of the questions um, for this paper and do some work solutions. Okay, let's get cracking. Question one, um, we're asked to rearrange A is equal to B over C to make C the subject. We wanna say C equals something. I mean, circle the correct answer. Okay, so it's clear this one can't be the answer because that doesn't say C equals something, but it might be one of these three. So let's have a go at rearranging. So if A is equal to B divided by C, I can multiply both sides of my equation by C, and that would tell me that C A, C times A is equal to B, and that's multiplying both sides by C. To make C the subject, I need to divide both sides by A. So that tells me that C is equal to B divided by A, and it's going to be that one there. Question two, it says circle the smallest number from the list below. So if we go through this number here, five times 10 to the power of negative one, that's going to be 0 0.5. 10 to the power of negative three is going to be 0 0.001. 4 times 10 to the power of negative 3, that's going to be 4 times as big as that one, so that's going to be 0 0.004. And 10 to the power of negative 1 is going to be 0 0.1. So the smallest from these is going to be this number here, 10 to the power of negative 3. Question 3 asks us to simply circle the identity. So we've got all of these algebraic things going on here and we want to identify which of those is the identity. Well, this first one here, that's just an expression because it's not being equal to anything. Um, so that's just an expression. This one here is an inequality. We're saying x take away three squared is greater than five. This one here, x take away three squared is equal to one take away six x. That's an equation because this is something that we can solve. The final one, x take away three all squared. And then this symbol here means it is identical to x squared take away six x plus nine. So we're saying that this side expanded gives us this side. They're identical to each other. This is my identity. Okay, question four. One of these is a sketch of y is equal to x cubed plus 2. We need to decide which one. Well, we know that b and c are both parabolas, so they are quadratic, so it's definitely not going to be b or c. So it's either a or d. If we inspect this, we can see that we've got a y-intercept of 2, because if the x-coordinate was 0, then the y-coordinate would be 0 plus 2, which is 2. Um, so when the um, x coordinate is 0, um, the y coordinate equals 2, so it's not going to be that one, and it looks like it's going to be d. This has a y intercept of something that could be 2. It can't be that one because it's negative. Okay, question 5. A spinner lands on red, blue, or green. The relative frequencies after 400 spins are shown here. How many more times does it land on red than green? Well, let's have a look for red. It's going to be 0 0.35. So red is going to be 0 0.35 times by 400 spins. So that's going to be 35 times four, which is 70, 140. For green, it's going to be 0 0.15 times by 400, and that's going to be 15 times 4, which is 30, 60. Okay, so to work out how many more times it landed on red than green, that was green by the way, we're going to do 140, take away 60, and that gives me 80. So the answer is 80. Question 6. Um, we are asked to use ruler and compasses for this question. A ship is closer to port X than it is to port Y. We're also told that it's less than 11 kilometers away from Y. 
So on this map, um, we need to show the region where the ship could be. And we're gonna label that region R. So first of all, it's closer to port X than it is to port Y. So we're going to have a line that divides X and Y um, exactly halfway between, um, and it needs to be perpendicular to both um, X and Y. Okay, right, so um, what we're going to do is we're going to use our compasses to to create that. So let's grab this over here. So I'm going to plump my compasses over here and I need to open it up more than halfway. I'm just going to change the colour. Let's have a green line here. Okay, and I'm going to draw some construction lines here. So I'm going to draw an arc going this way. And then leaving my compasses open the same amount, I'm going to take it over to Y and I'm going to draw another arc like so. Okay, so I'm going to leave my construction lines on there and um, let's go back to blue here and I'm going to draw a line that goes through the intersections here. That was supposed to be blue. Okay, so we want a line that goes through both of these. Let's see if this lets me do this. Okay, let's try. Okay, that's the best I'm going to do. Right, okay, so that's going to be. Um, well this is exactly halfway between X and Y and um, we want to be closer to port X than port Y so we know that they were going to be on this side of our line. Okay so now I want to draw um, the points that are 11 kilometers away from Y so I need my scale here one centimeter represents two kilometers so so one centimeter is two kilometers and I want 11 kilometers so that's going to be 5.5 centimeters so if I open up my compasses about 5.5 centimeters okay again that's the best I'm going to do right so I then want to um, it's from Y so I'm going to go over to Y over here and this time let's do a red line and I'm going to draw all the points that are 5.5 centimeters or 11 kilometers from Y. So all of these points here are going to be 11 kilometers from Y. Okay. <clears throat> right, so, and I want um, them to be less than 11 kilometers from Y, so I want them to be on the inside of this circle here. So we're looking for, get the highlight so we're looking at these points inside this region over here, and I'm going to label that region R. Okay, and this is the area where the ship could be. Okay, question number seven. A solid shape is made with a cube and a cylinder. The cube has edge length of three centimeters. The cylinder has a diameter of one centimeter and a height of three centimeters. We're being told that the cylinder sits symmetrically on the center of the top of the cube as shown here. And we wanna draw the front elevation on the um, on the grid right so the front elevation that's going to be looking at it straight on so if I was looking at it straight on I would see a um, I would see a square that would look like this here and I would see a rectangle that had a width of one and a height of three Okay, so that's basically what I would see there. Okay, um, for part B it says the cylinder now sits symmetrically on the center of the top of the cube as shown here. 
So we want to draw the front elevation and the side elevation again. So this time I would still see this square as I did before. And it's going to be a 3 by 3 square. But now I'm also going to see a rectangle that has a height of 1 and a width of 3. Okay, and I will see a perfect rectangle if I looked at it directly from the front. Okay, so this is what I'm going to see. That's the cube part and that's the cylinder part. Okay, the side elevation, well that's going to be looking at it um, side on, so in this direction here. Okay, so if I looked in that direction, again, I'm going to see the square as I did before. And this time I'm going to see a circle sitting on the top. Okay, so we're going to see a circle and that circle is going to be there, a little bit smaller. Okay, and that's got to be perfect in the middle and that's what I'm going to see. The diameter of the circle is 1.